Hey everybody, it is Brett. Hey, I just want to say thank you for coming back to the things they won't teach you in school that you need to know. My name is Brett Longo. I'm here to try to teach you on a few things that uh, they probably aren't teaching you in school, but that really matter to you in your life. All right, so listen, today I am so glad you're here. I'm actually pumped that you are here because I'm going to teach you a lesson that I really wish I had learned when I was younger. It took me a while to figure this out. And I know this is probably readily available for everyone, but for me, I want you to know this. I want you to know this so bad, I'm cutting this video for you. So listen, they are not teaching you this in school, but this is something you really need to know. So stick with me here, and we will teach you this. Here we go. All right, hey look, thank you again for coming. I wanna teach you something. It's kind of reflects back on what I taught in the last lesson. Now, if you don't remember the last lesson, uh, or if you haven't seen the last lesson, I want you to go back to that video because it really does explain a lot of things. But listen, we are really at a crossroads. Our nation is really at a crossroads. And what I tried to show in the last lesson is that really we're, we're uh, between capitalism and communism, okay? Communism is the far extreme left of any type of government where it is fully controlled by the government and capitalism is where there is no government control at all. Now listen, every country that has any type of a social welfare program is somewhere in between, and that's what I call the social spectrum. And unfortunately, I think we're kind of like right in the middle, and the reason why I drew this line up and down was because when you get to the middle, you know, whichever way you go is kind of like downhill, okay? So, but there's something I didn't put in there I want you to know, and this really does bring it home. This makes it a little easier for you to understand. And if we could draw a line between that point all the way to that point, okay, that is what I call the tax line. Tax line. And it's basically a percentage, okay? So your income is basically what you work for. You bring it home in the form of a check. And somewhere along this line is how much money is being taxed from the money that you make. Listen, we have local taxes, which are like sales tax and property tax and local fees that are assessed uh, from maybe some local propositions, some things that we might be voting for here in the near future. And then we also have state tax, which really comes in the form of income tax. And, and then we have federal tax, which is also in the form of income tax. Now, the government got really smart. What they decided to do is they decided to take their money before you got your money. So when you receive your paycheck, you know, you just receive that amount, you look at it and you go, great, okay, this is what I get to live off. But you don't realize how much of that money is actually leaving your hands or your wallet and going to them. Now listen, the further we go this way, okay, the higher the taxes get, right? Because this side is all about taxing the people to create the programs for those in need. So right here would be the 50% mark. Okay, and honestly, I think that's pretty much where we're at. That's why I say we're at a crossroads. I really think that the, the situation our country's in is, is where we're seeing, and, and let me tell you, this is the worst of the two worlds is to be right in the middle. And the reason why is because you're being taxed at a high rate Yet at the same time, you know, you have to pay for goods and services. And of course, if you get this smelly stuff called debt, you've got to deal with that too. So you start to really, really get uh, overwhelmed with how much money is coming out of your pocket. And it really doesn't feel like there's much left over at the end of the month, okay? Now the unfortunate result is, is as we go further up this line, we have less opportunity to build this thing called wealth, all right? Now wealth is, uh, it's really, it's nothing more than really savings, okay? Um, we call it wealth because it grows. It, it, acquire, it over time grows, it matures. They call it matures, okay? But really what, it mat what matters and the only way you can have wealth is if you put money away. So, you know, we've all been told, you know, try to put something away for a rainy day, actually build up some nest egg so that you can have it when life gets hard. You know, we're all taught that, but um, it doesn't come from school, believe me. And, uh, and then we don't understand 
that, you know, really with a little bit of discipline, we can grow a lot of wealth. Okay. Um, so with that, let me, let me talk about how to grow wealth in this country. We basically have two markets. We've got the stock market and then we've got the real estate market. Okay. So, and, and honestly, think of it like this. These markets are nothing more than money making factories. So when you put money into these markets, the money is then starting to make money, which then turns around and makes money. So the little dollar bill that's created now can make another dollar bill and it just starts to grow. Okay. So now the stock market is probably the easiest one to get into. And we call that thing like a 401k. So if you have a 401k, okay, it's probably uh, some sort of mutual fund. And, uh, and that 401k is there to grow your whole life. It is your retirement, right? It's, it's there to grow and mature. And like I said, it's a factory. It's a factory that makes dollars. Okay. And those dollars then make more dollars. It's kind of cool if you think about it. And then you have the, the real estate market. Okay. The real estate market, of course, they say your biggest investment is your home. Like everyone, you know, the American dream is to own a home, right? So everyone is in this place where they want to grow or not grow, but they want to invest in that kind of a market. And the beautiful thing about the real estate market is, you know, you, you don't have to buy the full purchase price of the home to own it. You can only, you only put up like 20%, which is kind of cool because uh, with a little bit of investment in the front end, you can realize a lot of gain on the back end. Okay. So both agree the earlier you start, the more you make. Okay. Why? Cause you give the factories more opportunity to make more dollar bills. All right. Okay. So it's hard to understand why wealth has kind of been given a bad name. Like we are seeing people over here saying, well, we need to now tax. Whoops. There's that word again. Ah, oh, crap. That word again. We need to tax the wealth. But I'm going to show you, 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 you know, we all have this premonition that it's a, some, you know, Donald Trump guy, you know, that's just got money and he knows how to make his money grow. And we're all, you know, kind of on the sideline watching him. And of course, this is what the left projects is, you know, these wealthy people, we've got to, we got to take from their assets because, you know, they're, they're like the Donald Trumps of the world. You know, they're, they're the big boys, the big billionaire, big boys. Okay. Uh, that is so far from the truth. Okay. The truth is wealth is good for all of us and we all can grow our wealth. And I'm going to tell you, I, I read this book by David Bach and I think I'm going to put it in the comments or in the, in the notes below, but, uh, I, I highly recommend you read this book. It's called the latte factor. And what he figured out was if you just put in $5 a day into this one, the, the stock market, at $5 a day. And you were to do that for 40 years. So let's say you're a young 20 year old and you know, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to do this for 40 years. Now to give you a realistic picture of what $5 a day is, it comes out to about $150 a month. If you think about like, um, you know, uh, uh, minimum wage, minimum wage is anywhere around 10 bucks an hour. I think now, um, you know, everyone wants to grow it to 15, but if it is $10 an hour, you know, you're looking at $5, you know, you're looking at maybe your first 30 to 40 minutes of your workday is going to go into this money making machine. Okay. This factory and at $5 a day, if you did that for 40 years, you would come out on the other end at $950,000. That's right. Almost a million dollars that would be created in this factory, if you were just willing to commit $5 a day. Okay. Now, if you could do $10 a day. All right. So we're going to go big, right? You're like, go big, stay home, right? 10 bucks. Woo. Okay. $10 a day. You put in 10 bucks a day. That's like your first hour, right? Your first hour of work every day committed 40 years, just pounding away, going big. Okay. What you're going to find is, that you end up putting in or close to, I'm sorry, making 1.9 million 
dollars at just a $300 a month investment, okay? Now, if you were to say, um, I'm gonna keep it in there for another five years, all right? This 950K would turn into 1.3 million if you could just go five more years. And if you could go five more years with this, this uh, $10 a day, you know, just whew, sweating, 10 bucks, oh my gosh, you would make 2.6 million. Okay, that doesn't sound like the big, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Donald Trump guy, okay? It sounds more like you and me. If we could just discipline ourselves to put a little bit away each day. And if we had enough time, and time truly is the factor here, and that's why I feel like this lesson, if I had learned it sooner, I really would have probably, it would have changed my life. I would have probably been more concerned about making sure that $5 a day went into that market, into that factory. Now, if I could do it all over again, you know, I would probably spend the first uh, 10 years just putting it into this market here, the stock market. And of course, I would be bankrolling the big 10 bucks a day, man. Woo! Yep, giving it a big, big, good, uh, good shot there. And of course, at the end of 10 years, okay, so let's say I started when I was 20, by the time I got to 30, I would have roughly $50,000 sitting in that account. Now it's nothing to write home to mom about, I know. But here's the big deal. Now you've got enough money to put into this thing called a home. And hopefully you are married and your wife maybe is doing the same and the, together the two of you maybe could bankroll uh, $50,000 into a home. Nice little down payment, get yourself a home. And I guarantee you probably by the time you were ready to sell, um, after 40 years, it would be a good three times more in value than what it was. The good news is to realize $950,000 over a 40 year period, David Box says you will be committed to paying $72,000 into this factory. Now, historically, we know the market goes up and down, but one thing that David Bach always says is like, it's notorious. This market has gone sideways, up, down, every way. And it always seems like over time, over these 40 year periods of time, it matures close to 10%. And so that's what he's banking on. He's banking on that this market will just keep churning. Now here's the fun thing. If enough people were doing this, putting the money into their 401k, I mean, I'm talking people in all walks of life, from all different neighborhoods. If they were doing that, the market would just keep climbing. It's like we're all doing our fair share. We're all putting our money in. And instead of maybe putting our money into taxes and letting the government decide, you know, how the money's gonna mature. Um, unfortunately, I don't think there's gonna be much money left in social security by the time I can draw from it. I definitely guarantee you I'm not gonna have that, okay? So I just want you to know that. now. Why are they not teaching you this in school? I just took 10 minutes to teach you this. And I don't know. I, 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 there's, there's a part of me that wonders because this is so practical and it's so needed in order to see the future of our country grow and to see people grow into prosperity. It just seems like it's so needed. Um, but I have a hunch. I, I don't think these people want you to know this. Okay, I, I just think that... Um, they want you to be under the impression that wealth doesn't come to the mediocre, to the um, simpleton, to the person who carries maybe a, a $15, $20 an hour job, okay? It only comes to the big boys. And that's why maybe they've given wealth a bad name. Um, because, you know, I really think they, they might be uh, concerned that if you knew this, um, maybe you wouldn't want to go this way. Maybe you'd want to stay over here. You know, that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking is they're, they're, they're just not really wanting you to know this because if you knew this and you knew that you could grow, grow wealth and it was this simple that you would probably not choose 
to listen to their promises that they're the only way, that they're the only way that, that they, you know, they can serve the inner cities and the impoverished, that that's it. So, all right. So, um, my theory, the left, the people that want to progress us this way are in love with the big government. They love that they can tax the people. They can set regulations that the people have to live under laws. And they feel like the government is so very much needed that there's no other way to really reach into the impoverished in the inner cities and help them. And there's so many people out there that need help. And so as they, they really deliver this message to the American people, um, they're basically saying, look, we're the way. There's no other way. And I just showed you in 10 minutes, there's another way. Even people in inner cities could do this, okay, if they're willing to be disciplined with their money, all right? My hunch, they're saying this not because they want to help those I got to admit, in the, my lifespan, I'm 55, I'm looking back, I am seeing that there are still impoverished people in the inner cities. Um, there's still people that aren't getting ahead. They're, they're being promised by these people that they're the way, but they're no further along than when I was a little kid. They're still in the same place. So the hunch that I have is if these people really aren't concerned about delivering their promise. They're concerned about their power. In our country, money is power. The more money they acquire, the more powerful they get. It's true too for businesses and banks. Okay, just talk to Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon. Okay, this guy's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of power, okay? So, um, unfortunately, what I wanted you to learn in this little lesson is that what this uh, upcoming election comes down to is really your wallet. It comes down to how much money you're going to have in your wallet because if you continue to go up this ladder of taxation, less and less money is in your wallet. Pretty soon it gets harder and harder just to make ends meet, to pay that rent or mortgage, to buy those groceries. It seems like utilities go up every year. It's just constant um, fight and battle to pay those things and have just a little bit of money left over to put away. And at some point, there's going to be a breaking point. I don't know if the point is here, you know, maybe at 65% or at 80%. I'm not sure. But at some point, what you're going to see is more and more people not able to make ends meet, and what are they going to have to do? That's right. They're going to have to rely on the government. The government's going to be there saying, hey, look, we got you. You don't have enough money for food, we'll get you some food. Okay? And as we keep getting taxed, the government keeps providing programs, but it's at their discretion. It's who they're going to provide to and how much. Okay? If you grow wealth, if you put money away, um, I have a hunch you're going to want to want to do something other than just feed yourself with it. Okay. And this is the big argument of the left is they argue that, you know what? People only care about themselves. They're not going to care about these poor impoverished people in the inner cities. They're going to only serve and feed themselves and they're going to turn their backs on those that need the, the programs and they're going to walk away. And I'm, I'm sorry, but that's not the way humans work. When we are, uh, you know, they call it your pearl. You know, when you, uh, you know, think about how the pearl is made an oyster, it's this irritant, it's like a little irritant of sand or something that gets caught And this oyster then grows layers and layers and layers of, of really mucus around this little thing, this irritant that's inside of them. And in the, end, in the end, that becomes a pearl. And they often say that, you know, people don't forget where they've come from. And they, they certainly don't forget what it was like when they were there. And so often when people have a chance to turn around because they've, 
maybe been delivered or deliver themselves out of that situation, they turn around and the first thing they want to do is rush back to help. They want to go back into that inner city and show the people, it only took me $5 a day. I listened to this guy on YouTube. It was crazy. I kind of just went for it. I bought that book and I read it. I couldn't believe it. I just stayed away from Starbucks and I ended up with this much. And I'm here to tell you, you can do the same. That's the human heart. That is what we all want to do. We all want to give. And it's hard to believe that the left or the government thinks that we'll never be, that we'll be so heartless that we'll never be the person that wants to turn around and go back and help. And I believe that this is kind of the, the shame game. They're just playing a big shame game on us. They're saying, look, if you, uh, you know, you got your money, you're going to walk off and do no you're not going to help anyone. You're and maybe there are a few that do that, but I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, Hey, I got a little extra resources. I'm a little older now. I got a little time. You know, I found this cause. I really want to give to it. I want to give to it with money and I want to give to it with my time. You know, it, it might be uh, like mothers against drunk drivers or, you know, uh, children that are going to school hungry. I mean, there's so many causes. And I, I bet you right now, if you had this much money in your account, what would be the cause you'd want to give to? What would be the thing that you would say, man, that would be cool. Well, first of all, you know, I would do this. You know, I would go help these people here. I would take a year off and maybe go to another impoverished country and help people there. You know what I mean? There's so many things that you, I know if you just put your mind to it, would say, yeah, I would definitely want to do that. Okay? When we get over here, this goes away. There is no opportunities for this. And these people know it, and so do these people. And this is the fight we're in right now. Okay? Now here's the bottom line. Uh, this is really about, how do I want to say this? This is really about how you want to govern you. Okay? If you think about it, you have an opportunity to make a choice that is going to decide how you govern you. Are you going to want to vote on this side of the spectrum for government officials that say, we want less of these, we want less of these and these, okay? And in that so doing, you have opportunity for this and this? Is that what you want? You want to have the, 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 uh, the freedom? to make choices and govern yourself and rely on yourself and know that in the end you'll, you'll have enough to be generous towards others? Or do you want to vote on this side? Do you want to listen to the promises of the left? That they're going to go ahead and give you things like this and much more. And that they are the answer for you. This really comes down to these are Who's going to govern you? Is it going to be you or is it going to be your government? And now here is the big takeaway. And it's going to sound like a cliche because it kind of is. But here's the big lesson. The choices that you make today will shape and affect your tomorrow. It, I know it's crazy. You've heard that before. I know. But I want you to hear the truth in this. Okay. If you are one that um, has a focus on your future and sees clearly what you want to become, you know that maybe you have to attain a degree or you have to attain a certification or something and you are fighting every day for that. Your tomorrow will be that. If you are one that is struggling to find the ambition or desire, that you're not sure if you want to push hard to see your tomorrow become your reality and instead you'd rather just relax and maybe you know take in YouTube or uh, watch a ball game on TV or something and that is what you choose it will shape your tomorrow in your reality you see this election 
is really about your tomorrow. You're going to make the choice today. I'm sorry, on Tuesday, but it is going to shape you and your tomorrow based on how you choose. This election has never been any bigger and the two sides have never been any further apart, which is why it's the biggest. The choice is we either go this way or we go this way and you get to choose. And in the end, what sits is how much money is in your wallet. Well, hey, I just want to say thank you again for watching. And I want to leave you with this. Realize that the world rewards the courageous. So I'm going to ask you to get brave, get a little uncomfortable, go out and do something that you know is going to be a challenge. It's going to take a little courage, but if you do it, you know you're going to change the world. All right, my friend, we will catch you next time on the things they won't teach you in school that you need to know.